everyone. I'm Julie. And I'm Jenny with a G. We're cousins and best friends. Who live on opposite ends of the country, so we decided to start a podcast. Welcome to Get Funny. <laughs> right before we jumped on to record, you sent me some texts. Oh. And I'm just going to jump right into it because... <laughs> You sent me these texts, and I was like, first of all, Jenny, I am very quickly putting makeup on for this show that is now a video podcast. I just know why we did this. Welcome back, (laughs) listeners um, or viewers, because the big news is we are officially on Spotify with video. So if you listen to us on Spotify and you're like, what do those girls look like? You can switch over and watch the video. And then if you're going to get in the car, you can switch back and pick up the audio in the same place, which I think is kind of cool. I don't that actually is actually Spotify really personally for, uh, for podcasts, <laughs> but it's pretty cool. Um, and for those of you who are not on Spotify, we are also on YouTube, our full episodes. So the last two episodes we've done are on there. YouTube. Anyway, YouTube. Anyway, so all this all this to say that I <laughs> had to put makeup on for this and uh, no, it's fine. So Jenny texted me right beforehand to tell me a random take that she had about Harry and Meghan. <laughs> and I was like, well, let's just talk about it here because I don't have time uh, to do it before. And also maybe our listeners care. Um, folks, if you do not want Spoilers. spoilers who's gonna i mean it's just their life spoilers um their life. jenny is currently watching the netflix documentary while listening to harry's book spare i have already finished the documentary and finished the book last week so what were you saying to me this is my random take although they don't bother me i can understand why people don't like them It's as if both of them just had learned that people are terrible when they got together. And I said, it's wild to me that they chose Tyler Perry, a person they said they didn't even talk to until before they moved to LA to be the godparent to their child. And the reason I say that, (laughs) y'all, my thing is, like I said, they don't bother me. They're like some people, there's that one guy, Pierce, or something. Pierce Morgan uh, is a trash Pierce Morgan, person, yeah. so he's like cares? obsessed with them and how much he hates because them. Because Megan didn't go on a date with him once. Like um, one time, ago, yeah. That's while he was married. Wild. That's it's wild crazy. to me. And then the Bethany Frankel, she also hates them too. But like, I don't hate them. I think they're whatever. But it's just like as I'm listening to the book and I'm watching the documentary, they both lived in a world that they did not have any confrontation any controversy like it was just for them they were just living blindly (laughs) like it's that tiktok i'm blind like i can't see anything (laughs) and they just are like wow these revelations like racism exists wow people are terrible and they don't respect boundaries i cannot believe it is unbelievable (laughs) and i'm like what is wrong with both of y'all like i get it like i understand that Young Harry, because of the book, he describes how he didn't grieve his mother's passing. And I get it. Grief is very hard. Megan, though, girl, where you been? (laughs) Like, you just really did live in a world of just fantasy for yourself. And I just find it, the whole interaction, their revelations, their stuff, like, oh, my God. And then I'm also like... To you both, I just hope that you really do love each other in a way because you also seem every time you do these books or you do these interviews or you do this documentary that you are siloing yourselves Mm. into just being with yourselves. And as great as some people are, you do need to have other interests besides yourselves. Mm-hmm. And your kids are going to eventually grow up. Your kids are going to eventually be like, hey, I don't like to do this. Or why can't I meet my cousin? Or why can't I do this with family? Like some of that stuff is really going to come back tenfold. I'm just, just be mindful that y'all really enjoy each other. Cause it looks like you all will only have each other. Those are my things. I think that even if down the line they do, you know, break up because half of the relationships fail especially those that are so public like this if they do i i do think at least for harry like it seems like harry leaving the royal family was only a matter of time megan was just the catalyst that made that happen but if you read the book and if you like listen to what he says in the um documentary and stuff he 
has not felt on the same page with his family for a long time. But he didn't have, before Megan came along, he didn't have a reason besides his own feelings to get out. And so because he wasn't someone who prioritized his feelings or his like importance to his family, because he's always seen as a spare, he didn't think that his own relationships were important enough to get out until that he saw how they were treating this person he loved. And he was like, oh, no, we're not doing that, which I can appreciate. Um, so all that to say, if they do break up, I do think that they would both be in better places. Maybe not her, because it seems like she had a great life and she gave up a lot to be with she him. Did. But um, Wait, you <laughs> like, to find she out. was just she living her up. life. Yes, but she gave it all up before they even said, I love you. And that is wild to me. Well... Yeah, you know, celebrities, rich people, they're different. But um, <laughs> to your main point about them acting like they just learned that people can be terrible. Yes, with Harry, I feel like his sort of naivete is more uh, expected. Whereas Megan, a, an American woman who grew up in Los Angeles with a black mom in the past 40 years. Like, girl, you never... Like, I know LA is, like, diverse or whatever, but I just find it... That was the part of the documentary that floored me, was Megan's mom being like, I never had the talk with her, and I wish I would have, and blah, blah, blah. And it was like, ma'am, you... this I find this impossible to believe. And I also yeah. think because of... Like, it's so far-fetched that part of me is like, I wonder if they're playing it up for this narrative, because... What one thing you'll notice and sort of like a big critique of them is and I, I like them overall like I find them interesting whatever I'm like happy for them I want them to be happy but they are problematic because they're sort of pushing back against the royal family blah 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 all this stuff but at the end of the day and they'll say this a hundred times over if the family would have just treated them with a little more kindness or like welcomed Megan or tried to help her when she was getting death threats, they would have gladly gone along with it with this like mm -hmm. racist colonial institution. They were ready to be a part of it. It's just that it didn't work out the way they wanted to. So they had to leave. But if the Royal family like tomorrow was like, we're so sorry, blah, blah, blah. I have no doubt that Harry and Megan would go back. And for their sake, like for their healing sake, I would hope that that doesn't happen because that would mean that you learned nothing. Um, so, but because of that, I wonder if they don't want to call what they experienced over there, like they don't want to name it as racism and like say that these people are racist and this is a racist institution because they're still trying to tread the line of being like, okay, well maybe one day they'll invite us back and we'll still get to be in it. Like even in Spare, Harry like presents the facts and stuff but he goes to very careful lengths to not throw the members of his family under the bus. Whereas based on their behavior, I'm like, throw them motherfuckers under the bus. Like they suck, but he will not do it. Um, yeah. Those are my takes. Yeah. This is a, this it's, is a Royal Watcher podcast, apparently. Which I, not, it's not at all, but it's just, I do find it interesting. I'm like, okay, I see you spare. I got you. And you know what? Them like, them going to Tyler Perry or whatever. Tyler Perry offering his help. I don't remember if it's in the documentary or the book, but they ask him, like, why are you helping us? And he says his mom was a huge Diana fan and she would, you know, it would make her happy if to know that she was helping out Diana's son or whatever. And I just want to say the hold that Diana had on oh, a certain I... age of women, <laughs> like my mom obsessed, loved her. Like when she died, like, we were in mourning when she died. Oh, no. I mean, we watched the funeral procession. Like, Diana yeah. truly was, uh, I think, that story that everybody wants to have or at least likes to believe in. Like, oh, anybody can make it. And look, she's so wonderful. And she's so nice. And she left a crazy man. And she tried it and then was so tragically taken from us. Oh, like, my God. There are certain people that we will mourn because they were taken from us. Diana, Selena, Selena. <laughs> like I mean, it's just this is what happens. Like oh they were God. taken from us, and I would say Aaliyah. Oh, I still can't <gasps> listen. Oh, Aaliyah. The amount of grief that we have gone through of people we don't even know personally. Look, 
<laughs> Millennials uh, really went through it because we lost Aaliyah, Left Eye, and had 9-11 in the span of like a year. Not even a no, year. And it I was just like feel months. like that's very rude. Aaliyah, Aaliyah died in August of 2021. Twenty two thousand one. Two thousand one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> two thousand one. Um. Yeah. Isn't that, I mean, the whole thing is why I terrible. Can't. terrible. I'm gonna start crying again. As you know, I was thinking about Selena this week because I fell I down can't. a rabbit hole watching her performances, and I was just crying. I, Wait, I can't. Did I? Did I know that? <laughs> did yes, I because I texted. I texted you about it. I remember I told you the thing where someone said, if you meet a girl born after 1995 named Yolanda, you know yeah, that her parents were on some that. fuck shit. I, yeah. I didn't know that that was, I, I just thought that was, that is just, to me, factual information that you need to share. I didn't know you went down a rabbit hole looking I, at her for We literally, that's where our tech started. But whatever, we're not going to do this. But yes, y'all, if you, and I'm sorry to our Yolanda listeners, if you were born uh, after 1995, after... Yolanda Sal Sal Saldivar? Sal, 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 Saldivar. Saldivar or Salazar? Saldivar. Sal, Saldivar. Saldivar. Whatever her name is, she better not get out of murder. Murderer. Murderer is her <laughs> she name. She murdered Selena. Um, and her name was Yolanda. And the fact that anyone could name their child Yolanda after this happened is just no, I'm sorry. Oh Upsetting. my god. So there is one of our special listeners out there, Mayoli Cakes, and when Yoli revealed that Yoli was short for Yolanda, it's as if all of us on Clubhouse, um, I don't think I ever would have so I just thought her name was Yoli. The same way my name is just Jenny. I thought her name was just Yoli. Well, <laughs> when is how, when was Yoli born? Oh my god, like last year. And she's very young. She uh, after nineteen ninety five? Uh, what, how old is she? Make the calculations. Make don't, the calculations. I mean, don't put her age on blast, but was it before or after 1995? After 95, yeah. After. Ooh, She's much younger ooh, than us. Ooh. I think, I think if I made the calculations, I could have been a teen mother having yoga cakes. <laughs> teen so, mom. <laughs> she uh, loves us. I love you, Yoli. I mean, I Sorry. can see why she goes by Yoli. Right. I don't, mm-hmm. I mean, Yolanda's after 1995, I don't think mm-hmm. go by Yolanda. There's no, no. way. No, also, baby Yolanda, it. it just sounds like it's a <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like there are certain names that you can't imagine them being babies, like Bibbit, Bibba Ruth. Like, you know what I and mean? Ruth, like babe, and yet they named a candy bar after <laughs> Oh my uh, god, I want chocolate. Oh. Well, do okay. you want to go get some? Okay. I, well, I do have an Instacart order that I need to just actually complete, but I think I'm gonna add chocolate to that bad boy. Oh, good. Do you use good. Instacart? We don't. We do. Um, we used it like a few times over the pandemic, but we use the actual grocery store apps and just place orders for pickup, and we'll go pick oh, them up. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then what happens to me, as just happened to me last weekend, is I'll go pick up the order. You know, they have the designated parking spots that you pull yes. into. They'll put my groceries in the car, and then I'll open the receipt and see the things that they didn't have, mm. and then I'll pull out go to a different parking spot in the parking lot and then walk my ass into the grocery (laughs) store, find the thing, buy it, check out. It's very upsetting to me. One time I ordered pickup and I'm five minutes away from the store. So, you know, I press on my way, Mm -hmm. got my, my garbage to put in the, in the car to take to the garbage place. And I get a call and it is the young man holding my grocery saying, where you at? Like, where you at? I'm, I'm on my way. I am. I apologize. I, I'm two minutes away. So I'm, I was like, I'll be right there. Not three minutes had passed. That man called me again. I'm standing in front. What? I'm like, is this how the, I thought y'all came out like this is I hold on. This is where I'm going to say it. I know all stores are different, but I need you all to have a universal pickup process. If I say I'm on my way. Then when I arrive, I say, I'm here. Then you bring me my stuff. This young man was, call- and it was a cold day. And that man was calling me. I said, I- I'm here. I-, I felt like I was in trouble. I just want to put that out. There. I've never had that. Like, yeah, it's definitely like, okay, on my way. I'm here. There's been a few times where I've had to call on top of it. Be like, just making sure you guys saw it. Dude, was this a Publix? Yes, was a Publix. So, you know, Publix, obviously, is a delight. Shopping yes, is a delight. Um, I wonder if that's an instance where Publix takes it too far, the customer <laughs> service aspect, where it's like, once they say they're on their way, you better get outside and wait for them. But, like, 
Fr- that's not helpful for anyone. <laughs> and it was so cold. Like I saw it was a Friday and it was the coldest night mm-hmm. of the week. And that was like right before uh Pipe Again it happened. And I was just like, oh. oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like that man was frozen outside. But, he couldn't yeah. have waited inside. Like I said I was on my way. <laughs> I can yeah. be on my way for seven minutes. I <laughs> didn't know. It was what that if you serious. hit traffic? What if you had to stop for a stray dog. I don't know. Right. There's so well, many different scenarios. Hold on. Go what? back to that one. Why would the stray dog be there? And I would stop. Just, oh. I just. Pardon me. I thought you were a lover of uh, living things. I, if I saw a stray dog walking around, I would stop and try to help the dog. I mean, I would just assume the stray dog is not a stray and going to its home. Why would like you assume a, that? <laughs> it's a leisurely thing. walk that the dog's making. There was a period of time where Richard and I went to look at some houses. Like, we went to some open houses in L.A. I know. How it was that? Did that make it you was, feel rich? No, Ooh. it made us oh. feel extremely poor. Because Never. we were like, oh, <laughs> we cannot afford a home. <laughs> but it. it's fine. Even, even with our budget as low as it could be for an inhabitable house in Los Angeles County. It was oh, still Los too Angeles. high. Why but is Los anyway, Angeles like this? So we would go see these houses in these neighborhoods where like people had been living forever. And like, it was very different from our street where we have some houses and also some apartments, whatever. It was, these were all residential. And several times when we were like driving around, looking at the houses, we would see a dog just outside. And we would kind of like track it and follow it because it's like walking down the sidewalk and we're like, is this a stray dog? Is this a stray dog? And then every time we would like then see the dog like go into a house or like a person would come around or whatever. Then there was one that we tracked for so long. And finally, I was about to like, I got out of the car and then this woman came out and was like, oh, sorry, this is our dog. And we were like, oh, great. But like- How cute was the dog? They're always cute. Oh, Anyway, all of that to say that in my mind, I thought you would have stopped for a dog, but I guess not. Um, (laughs) I mean, I wouldn't have stopped for a dog, but it depends on what kind of dog, because I think... No. Hold on, listen. So, you know, I've wanted a dog. Listeners, I do have a family dog, but he doesn't live with me. He lives with my parents. Um, We um, inherited him from my grandma, and he is... Our grandma. uh, Our grandma. I know I was going to say, I was like, it's weird, (laughs) but yes, our grandma. And um, he's going to be 15. So now you have to come to celebrate his quinceanera. So I just oh my god, yes! Look at tickets because we have Please, to celebrate. Wait, when his, is it? Oh my god, marking. when is it? Technically, they gave him they gave him abuela's birthday. So that's Aww. that's what they told us. So we use that as the marker. So um, it's a quinceanera. <laughs> I am obsessed. Oh my god. Oh yes. my god. But I have to do it. I do, you know, I don't live with him, like I said, but he's just so cute. I just love him so much. But I think that in the future, me, I could potentially have a dog. And you're going to correct me because I don't know the full name of the dog. But I think it's called the King's Charles Cavalier. Or there's that two Cavalier King Charles. Is that what it is? Okay. Well, yeah. Cool. Cavalier yeah. King Charles. They are so cute. Are. Uh, I went to a, a birthday party for a dog a couple of, uh, last weekend. And they it was like three of them in the park. And they are just so adorable. So that the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is the first dog that I can remember wanting desperately. And I've always loved dogs and I've always wanted dogs. But that dog was like. I remember I love that dog so much. I wanted one. And the car that I wanted, I was probably in like third grade, was not a fancy car at all. But as a child, I thought it was very fancy. It was a, <laughs> a Dodge Neon. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. It's not that I thought it was. <laughs> you were in third grade. That's cute. A Dodge it's not Neon that I Neon. it's not that I thought it was no, they don't make them anymore. Um, if they did, I'd probably get one. But wow. it's not that I thought it was fancy, is that I thought the name Neon was cool because I thought Neon was cool. And so I was like, oh, a Dodge Neon. And we always would see them when we were on road trips, and it was my favorite car to see. So um 
in another world, I would have a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and drive a dog okay. neon. So I noticed that you added another word to this dog name. Like, why does it have four names? Cavalier I don't know. It's King actually Charles quite an. <laughs> it's it's quite annoying. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. That's the dog that Charlotte has in Sex and the City. It is, and so that's all I could think of was like, oh, it's Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> you are. We have to stop talking Highly about dogs, allergic. but. No, oh, that's not what I was going to say. You are highly um, suggestible. Like when you hang out with a dog, you're immediately like, I want this kind of dog. And I'm like, when are you going to just accept that you like dogs? <laughs> like, because you used to say, you used to say you wanted a bulldog. Yes, I still do. But you wanted then I a bulldog heard- and you were going to name him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bruno. Yes. And Bruno Paws, I still want him. But here's the thing. The thing I've learned, my thing I've learned that French Bulldogs, they just have so many health issues. And I don't want to contribute to being somebody who is going to want these animals to keep having them not be natural Mm -hmm. and still have all these problems. So that's really where I stopped with the Bulldogs. But there's only two now that I really want. And that's the, um, hold on. (laughs) It's in French. Hold on. It is a... you know what I'm talking about. It's white. Bichon Frise. <laughs> Bichon. <laughs> I'm sorry. She said Bichon. it's French. Ha ha ha. Oui oui. Je... <laughs> Croissant. It's, yep, that's the dog. Uh, a Bichon Frise because they're <laughs> considered hypoallergenic. But I also found out that hypoallergenic means nothing because you can still be still allergic to the dander that the dog has. But I was in a home with that and I didn't have any reactions during the stay and after. So that's why I have to do research on the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Mm -hmm. because I think I may be allergic to them. But they're just so cute. They They are. cute. But Bruno, Bruno will still be the name of my dog. I just want that to know. Bruno Paws. I don't know where you are, baby, but when I find you, it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have a baptism, so be ready. A baptism? Um, is Tyler Perry going to be the godfather? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, welcome to my favorite part of the show, which is all of the parts. But this is called Seat on Screen, where we talk about our new movie we watched, which is an old movie, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. I just realized it came out 20 years ago. Oh, my God. We can't do the dates. We can't do the dates. I'm sorry. I was going to say, it's a movie from 2003, which, according to the math, is 20 years ago. We can also call it How to Be Super Annoying in 10 Scenes because this Uh, movie (laughs) so (laughs) freaking annoying. Um, And you know, uh, you know, we've been, we've kind of had the the titles like, I usually love a movie no matter how corny it is. You usually don't like the movie regardless. But I I wouldn't say that. I I wouldn't say that. (laughs) But you, more than likely, I'm going to like the dumb movies. Sure. This is the one I do not enjoy this movie from the 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 fern to that damn ugly dog to everything. Can't Yeah. This it, movie really um, upsets me. I had not seen this movie probably since 2004. Um to the point where I had I knew the general gist of it. And obviously, we're going to spoil this 20-year-old movie. Um, right. If I you haven't seen it, I'm <laughs> sorry. Just, just You're fine. Watch it first and then come back. Or just listen to us talk about it and then don't watch it. Watch something else. Um, so I completely forgot the actual details of it. I thought it was a certain yes. way. Uh, oh God, I hate this. Why do we have to talk about this movie? Okay. <laughs> so just in my the- head... Just in my head, <laughs> in my head, I hated this movie a lot. Like, I, it's okay. not a movie that I ever rewatch. Like, anytime someone's like, it's my favorite rom-com, I'm like, really? Is that? Mm, no. Right. So then, Who's saying like, that? No. And so then when I was watching it, I was like, okay, why well, don't, I, I do still actually hate a lot of this movie. Um, <laughs> the parts that I hate are still the same parts, but there are some parts that are cute. Mostly the fact that um kate hudson and matthew mcconaughey are cute they're cute actors they're cute 
Is this our first Matthew McConaughey? We because we haven't done the wedding planner. Our wife. We haven't whale. done the wedding. <laughs> um, this it might be, be our first McConaughey. Um, they're cute. They're fine. So, uh, Kate Hudson plays Andy. She works at a women's magazine similar to a Cosmopolitan. And what Andy wants more than anything is to be a serious journalist. They always do. She wants to write about war and famine. And she has a master's from Columbia. I'm like, girl, that was a mistake. Print journalism (laughs) is dead. But anyway, um, her boss at the magazine only wants her to write these how-to columns. Like, how to rock your man's world in bed. How to... Lose get out of the baby ticket. weight, whatever. Yeah, how to get out of a ticket. Um, so Andy comes up with the idea through various whatever uh reasons, mostly the fact that her best friend Michelle 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 mm-hmm. played by Michelle. Catherine Hahn, who's amazing, love her so much. Her best friend is heartbroken. She just broke up with her the love of her life, which we later find out. They had been dating for a week and a half. One one week. Is it I so- found this so preposterous, but you're kind of supposed to. You're like, this girl is crazy. Like she is doing things like, you know, saying I love you after the first night or whatever. So Andy it. takes the idea to <laughs> and says, I bet I can make any man fall out of love with me, basically, or break up with me in 10 days. It's basically a reverse how-to, showing people what you should not do, uh, showing women what you should not do in relationships with men, at least at first, unless you want to drive them away. So Andy's got her bet. She is going to, or not her bet, her task. She's going to find a man. So she goes out to a bar. Meanwhile, Matthew McConaughey plays Benjamin Barry. Both their names are alliterative. She's Andy Anderson. He's (laughs) Benjamin Barry. Um, Creative. For some reason, Benjamin Barry is a an ad executive who changes his shirt in his office every day. And a mess. The women in his office watch him change through the blinds. Sir, it didn't look like he got sweaty on the way in. Well, you know, he drives a motorcycle. He does drive a motorcycle, but it was so weird. But anyway, he's excited because did you find chocolate? Is that I what did. Um, he's excited because there's a big diamond account that they're about to get or some shit. Um, and his boss doesn't want to give it to him because there's these two women, the Judies, um, who, I I guess because they're women, they're going to get the diamond account. I don't know. They say Ben, they say Ben is like the sports guy, the like, you know, aftershave guy, and he doesn't know anything about luxury. And he really wants this account. So he's trying to convince them that like, he's the right person for this. And in order to do this, he says he can get women to fall in love with diamonds the same way he can get women to fall in love with him. And insane, insane. What I did not realize or what I forgot is that early, like right before the scene, the Judy's are at the magazine that Andy works at. And yep. they they mm-hmm. see Andy's editor and they learn that Andy's about to do this, how to lose a guy in 10 days. So they're at the bar with Ben and he says, I can make any woman fall in love with me. They know Andy's doing this bet. So they say, I had how about that. her? <laughs> I forgot. I did not know. Like in my head, this was just something that they came into randomly. Like I yes. didn't even remember that there was this outside controlling factor pushing them together which and is I feel diabolical like, i feel like the black judy i think i've seen her in more she's recently. been in a lot of stuff she's yeah stuff. like i, don't know I was like mean. this girl is so familiar and then i went to her imdb and i was like oh she's been in literally everything <laughs> like she's cra- been- go you judy yes go yes. you but they her name is like- michael michael michelle oh go ahead michael michelle mm-hmm, uh mm-hmm. they literally were like the stepsisters in Cinderella. I couldn't mm-hmm. but keep going. It was so weird. So with that in mind, they my or Michael, uh Ben and Andy start dating. And while they're doing this, let's just Watch. remind you of the premise. Andy is trying to do all of the things 
that she can possibly do to get Ben to break up with her in 10 days. At the same time, Ben is doing everything he can possibly do to get Andy to fall in love with him in 10 days so that she will come with him to his fa- his family, his um company's big diamond party shit and show his boss that he got her to fall in love and then he'll get the diamond account and everyone will be happy. So for the bu- the bulk of this movie, Andy is acting Wild. not just like a bad girlfriend, but like the most unhinged friend anyone could ever ask for. Things that no rational person would do. Like they're at a Knicks game oh, and it's the, uh, the finals. It's the finals. And Andy likes the Knicks. She's the one who has the tickets. At In the fourth quarter with like two minutes left, She's like, Ben, I'm thirsty. I'm really thirsty. And he's like, well, can you just wait? There's just a few minutes left. And she's like, no, 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 I need it now. Mind you, Ben wants her to stay in love with him or fall in love with him. So he goes out. He gets her a drink. No ice. Brings it back. There's maybe a minute left. She's like, I said diet. He has to go back. He misses the game. No rational person would do this. And no rational person would accept this behavior. Like, I... it. I understand the premise. I know that Ben is overlooking all of these crazy things because he's trying to get her to be in love with him. But I just felt like it was just, it made the movie so uncomfortable to watch because you're just watching someone be garbage and terrible. And you're like, why are you doing this? There was so many times, one, when they're in the movie theater and Andy is like talking throughout the movie. So there's this big guy behind them. telling them be quiet. She just keeps going. She's like, my boyfriend's going to kick your butt. They've been dating for two days at this point. He gets punched in the face. And I'm just like, girl, you are causing this man to be violently hurt. Causing, <laughs> yeah. And she, uh, just a little que funny um, <laughs> side quest here. They are watching the movie Sleepless in Seattle. Which we watched. Um, and and she it's at it the end. Yes! It's at the end of the movie. And so they go out to the lobby. The dude who's behind them, who really wants to watch a movie, punches Ben and is like, I'm, now I'm going to go back inside and watch the rest of my favorite movie or whatever. I'm like, sir, the movie's over. The movie's when they're over. at the Empire State Building, that is the end of the movie. It is done. And then Andy says it's her favorite movie. Like, no wonder movie. she's crazy. Exactly. Because, because a she's a crazy horrible person. Movie. Yes. So yes. also, like, even if my thing is, like, she I, at the, the most of the movie, Andy doesn't know that Ben also has this bet. So right. Neither she's of them know. acting so crazy and the guy's staying and she's kind of like, oh, he's staying because I'm so quirky. No, he would have left after the first day, girl. Like, what are you doing? How to lose a guy in 10 days is impossible. You would lose him in an hour because you are acting insane. Like, y'all, she brings a dog in on day four, I think, and says this is the our child. Then, I don't understand where that dog goes. I, I right. was curious at the end. I was like, who has the dog? I, I He had it for a little bit at some point. Ju- justice it for Kroll? Kroll? Kroll, the name? warrior king. <laughs> and he <clears throat> he gets mad at her because on day five, she calls his mom to get baby pictures. And then day <laughs> six, they go to therapy at her Michelle's house. Like, this movie is insane. It would really irk me. So these are the spoilers, y'all. They finally make it to the diamond party. Mm -hmm. At the diamond party, the boss of Ben goes up to Andy to find out if she's in love with him. Oh, I I guess I am. Uh, Don't tell him. Please don't tell him. So then the Judys, because Mm -hmm. technically Ben won his bet. The Mm -hmm. Judys try to ruin it and tell Ben's stupid ass friends that Andy knew about the bet. Mm -hmm. That she's in cahoots. (laughs) In cahoots. So then they go, literally, with no other information but from the the Judy's. Correct. And they say, don't tell Ben that you knew about the bet. Just tell him that you love him. Just, like, what is wrong with all of you? So then she gets mad. Then Mm -hmm. he, Ben, finds Andy's boss, because she was invited to the diamond party, and she literally, literally spills all the beans. And he's, like, mad. But this is the part I don't get. You're both mad because you both used each other. But then, Andy, you're just going to go and interrupt Mr. Hamlish's musical 
introduction why how how did you get the her being a garbage person like she wasn't acting she wasn't pretending she's actually garbage they're both bad people it was terrible y'all like it didn't make any sense it you would have thought like oh let's ask somebody to speak on their behalf or maybe let's do a karaoke number no she just ruined mr hamlish's actual musical performance Mm -hmm. and i was really Mm -hmm. upset because he is not only a Grammy Award winner. He Grammy, Tony, Emmy. He had it all. Yeah. I it's very really shitty, shitty, very selfish. The part, like, I understand how the basic structure of how a rom-com works. I know that they have to get to a point where, you know, they, maybe one or both of them don't realize that they're in love with the other person and then they have a blowout and then it's like, oh my God, will they get back together? But the thing about this one is that neither one of them had any right to be mad at the other one. Right, and they like, were mad. and they were so mad, so mad, and it was like, was what? I just a bet to you? It was like, well, you were just writing an article, so like, what? Neither one of you were being sincere right now. Like their big moment is, you thought you can lose a guy in ten days? Guess what? You lost him. I can't lose what I never had. Shut up. I <laughs> never <laughs> had him. Oh my god. And I then, was- and then. Michelle gets back with her whack ass week long guy. Oh a my week god! Later. When I I literally wrote it down because so this movie start like pretty early on. We see Michelle, aka Catherine Hahn. She's heartbroken over this man. He was gonna be the one. Blah blah blah. They've been building him up. He shows up at the end of the movie, and he is the most basic, unattractive man. I was like, okay, I know Love Is Blind or whatever, but this is a film. We could have had someone right. better looking for. For fucking well, Catherine Hahn. Or at least a better a better reason that he came back. Because in essence, she stalked him for four of the seven days that they were dating. Then apparently they may have not connected at all for a week that Andy was dating Ben. And all of a sudden yeah. this guy comes back is weird. And then this article comes back and in it she kind of says she liked him more than she thought but you couldn't have liked him because you were crazy the only real thing that they had was when they visited the family and that was when he went to yeah when they went to see his family and uh side note uh his family is from staten island why is everyone country as fuck i know matthew mcconaughey is from texas but how is everybody in his family hella southern um was very strange I guess they just moved to Staten Island. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what? Um, they had to just move there together. So it was she, a terrible... she's sort of like, I don't know, his mom like loves her and everyone loves her. And they're like, oh my God, Ben's finally met his match. And that's like the only genuine moment that they have. And coincidentally, it is the first time we see Andy's natural hair. Because most oh, of the right. film, she has the worst flat ironed, Early two thousands hair that gave me flash blacks. Flash flash blacks? Uh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> there was no blackness in this. Flash backs to um the early two thousands. It was upsetting. And her Kate Hudson's natural hair is not even that curly, but it just has a little wave. And that's the real her, and we get to see her. I was like, oh finally her hair. Yeah, that's the only time that they're maybe being genuine with each other. But somehow they fall in love, even though neither one of them have been themselves throughout this whole time. I I guess my biggest issue with it is that the ending, just all these things happened so fast. And it was kind of like, we need to wrap this movie up. It's been going on too long. So (laughs) let's just finish it. And they're going to end up together and whatever. And then we get... We get a update on the fern, but not the dog. Yeah. One of the sort of viral early viral moments of that era was um andy bringing ben a fern and she calls it their love fern and he lets it die and then she gets really upset and throws a fit i just want to say as the resident kiffany plant expert ferns (laughs) do not die in 10 days they certainly do not die in three days which is what happens in this the fern would still be alive they could have just chosen another plant. There are some plants that will die if you look at them the wrong way. A fern is not one of them. Um, what I wanted to tell you, though, this is the biggest piece of trivia that I learned about this movie. And you're going to love it. The man who directed this film also directed 
Little Italy. <laughs> little Italy. <laughs> oh, little Italy! The same! He's still... Wow, he's been working in the industry that... Oh, you yeah, girl. He also directed Mystic Pizza with Julia Roberts from the 80s. Oh, my um, gosh. Well, we should have started there. And Miss Congeniality, also a great movie. Uh, oh, I love Miss Congeniality. <laughs> me, too. Oh, Please, gosh. So one. good. Um, I, When I saw Little Italy, I was like, oh, Jenny. <laughs> Little Italy! Oh, God. I can't. Uh, oh, man. Well, don't watch it. Do watch it. I mean, We whatever. did, you know, we did one of the... 2000s classics for better or for yes. worse this is one of the more popular movies rom-coms of that era but um as far as the mcconaughey of it all we definitely do need to do the wedding planner um yes, we will speaking of j-lo i this is oh, not that new one that's anyone. coming out no she's got wait no oh yeah that new one with her and josh deschamel is coming out um next week interesting mm -hmm. i did not see anything about that no um I was watching, there's this, like, um, makeup YouTuber I watch, and he did a reaction video to J-Lo's, like, m m uh, makeup routine video or whatever, and apparently she she has very good makeup techniques, but what I couldn't get over and what he mentions in the video is that she's doing her makeup, but she has a filter on, mm. which is, like, so annoying. Yeah. And I was thinking about it earlier as I was putting my makeup on for this recording. I was like, why can't I have a filter? What, like this podcast platform does not give us the option for filters. And I just feel like I want that. <laughs> I I just find it fascinating because filters do come. I mean, so many people are trying to tell us that they're natural. And they're not. There's just one person. I'm not going to say their name. But okay. I just saw them on Instagram and I'm like, that's like five filters. And like, how <laughs> do you, do you all think when you do the filters that we're not, that we don't think you have the filter on? Like it almost is like that because it was like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, Live your this, life, but you don't like, need to rely on Like is like, I'm going to do my makeup. She's got a filter on and she's already wearing makeup. Yes. Uh, <laughs> like. Uh, and then the people, which doesn't make we sense because she already has great skin. Like. Everyone yes. knows that J Lo looks amazing. Like, girl, flex on them and do this without the filter and really show us up because that's the real. Shout part. out, shout out to the people who are doing it with the filters. Download it and then re-upload it so you don't see that it's tagged as the filter. Wait, are, is that something? Yes. <gasps> yes. And particularly, there's this one person I know, oh. and when I tell you, there. It's a guy. <laughs> when I see <laughs> his pose, like, I'm like, wait a minute. That's that. When I see this man in person, you don't see in the video, in the pictures that he posts, in the videos, it is clearly a filter to reduce his wrinkles. And I'm like, oh, but in person. So I noticed that when I actually have been around in person and I'm putting a video, I'm like, oh, just throw a filter. And they're like, but what? Why we gotta put filters? I don't I don't usually use filters. Like for most of my stuff, filter free. But some people are so into the filters you have to put them on anytime they're on camera. I don't wanna I mean this should be clear, but just in case, no shade to filters. Live yeah, your life. Live your life. I just get mad. I just get mad when people are like, This is a skincare product that I use and it's, it's made mad. my skin flawless. And it's like, well, you're using a filter. You can't and sell you a can shit like that. Like we can see the other stuff that you've posted. Like, if you're going to commit to this, commit from the beginning, okay? Filter day one, same filter. Or it's just like know. go and delete that old shit. But I'm yeah. so naive. I truly did not know that people filtered things and then downloaded it and then re-uploaded it. Yeah. <laughs> like I, because, that has me shook. Because if you don't, if you just put a filter, especially on Instagram, they're going to show you what filter name it is. So then you can use mm. it and try it mm. out. But when you download it, that's not on there anymore. Bada bing, bada boom. Or you wow. do the filters on another app and then do it like that. Okay. Okay. Crazy, y'all. I mean, live your life, but also know that we will see you in person and you will still be loved in the same way. That's the part I want to get out of here. Oh, you like, will be. I don't want you to rely on filters because you don't think that you're worthy. Like, you're worthy. And as somebody who, like, 
has done a ton of stuff with cameras and stuff. I don't, we always want to look as cute as possible, but mm-hmm. you are worthy and you are loved. And I will love you with or without a filter. That's just me. And as for me, I will probably dislike you with or without the filter. So that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, just keeping it real. What did you find on Al Gore's internet this week? Are we doing a, am I the asshole or I am the asshole and this is why, which I think they should start doing that. But Oh, that would be so funny. <laughs> I think that's probably a different subreddit, but um, yeah, I have some, am I the assholes? As usual, I pulled up some and they've already been deleted because they were too spicy for the internet. People Ooh. did not want the res- the responses that they got. Um, mm-hmm. So I do have one. Um, Or maybe two. Am I the asshole for not paying my daughter to babysit her younger siblings? Well, well, well. We're about to find out. Uh, (laughs) Oh, man. Um, So, my 20-year-old daughter is currently a college student. She lives in my house free of rent. I only ask her to do a few things around the house from time to time, like cooking and cleaning. Typical things you're expected to do on a daily basis anyways. Occasionally, she has to watch over her younger brother since I may be busy with work or when I need a break to hang out with my girlfriend. My daughter recently spoke up to me about how she feels I'm putting too much of a workload on her back, which I don't see how. She told me she's okay with cooking and cleaning around the house, but having to watch over her siblings was annoying and stressful and that it's taking away from her studies. That pissed me off. Because I myself went to school while having to pay bills and take care of her as a baby alongside of my ex-wife. I tried. No, I told her she was acting very privileged and that if I could do it, so could she. She didn't like that very much and stormed off into her room. Well, she went behind my back and told my sister how bad I was treating her. My sister is very kind and gullible at times, so she called me and said the least I could do was give her an allowance for the chores I make her do. I explained why I felt that wasn't necessary, and she told me not to compare my situation to my daughter's, since apparently I put myself in the position I was in back then, which I guess is a fair argument. (laughs) But since she's living in- The only argument. (laughs) Correct. Correct. But since she's living in my house rent-free and I'm paying for her college, I feel that I feel that in and of itself should count as an allowance. So I just wanted to ask whether I'm wrong for not wanting to pay her extra money to do basic chores. Um, edit. So in regards to how often I ask her to babysit, it's usually three times a week. I don't see how that's too much to ask of her. It's usually only for a few hours until I get back home. My boys are twins and they're five years old. They aren't crazy kids. They're more mature than the typical ones you'll see. I'm sorry. The edit is, you're asking your 20-year-old daughter to watch your five-year-old twins. Twins! Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. Yes. Here's the thing. I'm going to say it. If you can't afford kids, don't have them. I'm going to say, I said what I said. In this particular case, you don't, okay, I don't know what the situation in here is because it's, it sounds, it, is the ex-wife involved? The, uh, uh, she's not in the picture. Or I don't know, but it sounds like the daughter lives with him full time. And yeah, but what it sounds like, because he's got a 20-year-old and then five-year-old twins, is that he was a very young dad yes. with his ex-wife. And now he's like redoing things or whatever and trying to have his cake yeah. and eat it too. I, don't I just feel like there's a parent missing here for whatever reason. And that's also hard because you just don't know what the situation is. But at the same time, you cannot just force your child to watch the kids that you decided to have. You this chose not to her have choice. the kids. You're, she is and you, in school. And she's in school. You also wanted her 15-year-old self to have kids? That's not fair either. Like, she is 20 years old in college. Let her live. Or pay her. Pay yeah, people. like, pay people you for saying... Work. You saying like, oh, I I went to school and I had to pay bills and take care of her. Well, sir, that was the choice that you made. You made that choice. She that choice. has not chosen to have kids. So why are you punishing her for a choice that you made 20 years ago? 
it almost seems yeah. like not almost it definitely <laughs> seems like you think that she owes you this and this is why i hate when parents are like well i you know i took care of you i yeah, you're fed you to. and i uh sent you to the best schools i'm like well yeah you're a parent that's you don't get a medal for doing the bare minimum for your child no. that's actually like the government would take the child away if you didn't do those things like if you didn't feed them right. and clothe them so you don't get an award for that yeah um trash and- is trash and you don't you can also i another course you can put those kids in a after school program or a another thing they don't necessarily have to be with her three days out of seven five days she's going to school get out of here yeah i would definitely if you absolutely need the child care definitely at least pay her because it sounds like she's willing to keep doing this but for just some money and i would she can't get a job if she has to take care of your kids exactly i would also even bet that she would take way less money as an allowance than what he would pay for a nanny. So you better go ahead and pay her because otherwise you're going to be stuck having to find a babysitter for five-year-old twins. And I guarantee you that's going to be way more expensive. Yeah. You're the asshole. Definitely that's the it. asshole. Also, this argument of like, I let her live here. She doesn't pay rent. Yeah, and she blah, can't. Blah, like, yeah, I get it. But it sounds like she's already cooking and cleaning for, for her, you know, earning her keep. So... Right either start charging her rent and don't use her as a babysitter or just pay her some money. I don't understand. I hate people. Anyway, yes, definitely the asshole. Woo. People are the worst. People are the worst. Um, well, we yeah, have another I was... one or did we want to jump into what looking forward to or what did brought you joy? What did brought you joy? What did um, you, you know, I'm just looking what? at the time. <laughs> I know. I was going to say I have another one, but let's just leave it there because we spent a lot of time talking about the royal family and um, <laughs> other things. So, yes. Okay. What are you looking forward to, and or what brought you joy? I am looking forward to Cancun. I'm going to Cancun for the first time. So it's kind of like crazy. I've never actually traveled when it's really cold to a warm place. So then I'm like, how do I logistically do this? Like, I know what goes in my luggage, but like, what do you wear? (laughs) Like, do I wear my coat? Because on the way back, I'm going to need a coat. Or do I not wear a coat in hopes that... It's just warm enough. I don't know. So I'm thinking about those things. Very first world problems, but super excited to celebrate my friend. It's her birthday next Monday. So um, it's going to be fun. Fun. Yay. What about you? What are you uh, looking forward to or and and or uh, what brought you joy? Um, This coming weekend, I <laughs> you'll enjoy this. I am going to... A child's birthday party. Baby Kaden is turning one. Baby Kaden! Oh my gosh! Already <laughs> one year old. I know. It's wild. It's wild. Um, oh my god, she's so cute. Stop. She's so, she's cute. so cute. She's so cute. She's so cute. Uh, Shout out to sorry. our parents for just keeping Making her cute. Making a cute too. ass baby. Um, wow. She's so smiley. Um, baby. But um, yeah, so we'll be doing that. And besides the fact that, you know, it's cute that she's turning one it'll just be nice to see our friends um so that's fun and what brought me joy hmm I guess I don't have to answer that but I've already started down this line of (laughs) speaking so (laughs) um okay fine this is not a paid sponsored ad (laughs) sponsored segment I right before the holidays bought myself a pair of shoes that are they have laces just like regular sneakers but they have a special back so that you can just slide your foot into it and step down and you don't have to untie your shoe you don't have to you don't have to bend over whatever and the reason I even initially started looking at these shoes is because I was looking at them for my dad because my dad has some mobility issues and I thought this would be helpful for him and then I was like well, I want some too, because they sound fun. So I got them. 
I only, at that point, like before the holidays, I had them for maybe a week and I couldn't stop talking about them to everyone. Um, and They're that I, I was like, they've changed my life. They've <laughs> changed my life. They've brought me joy in a very, like, it's wow. a very small thing, but I love them. And right after that, I had actually gone to see baby Caden's parents. And I was like, look at my shoes, guys. And one of Caden's moms was like, I just got two pairs. <laughs> I was like, yes. Wow. Apparently, a lot of people are getting Instagram ads for them. I, uh, I guess because I don't spend that much time on Instagram anymore. I haven't seen them on there, but I'm in a shopping group on Facebook where people just like give links to things that they like. And several women in the group were like, I got these when I was pregnant because I couldn't tie my shoes. And then I just kept wearing them. And now like all of my non-pregnant friends love them. And it's just like, you never really think about, at least, okay, for me, I get annoyed by very stupid, dumb things that most people don't find annoying. But having that friction of not having to like tie my shoe and undo the thing and make sure it's like, and just like slipping it on, especially because I'm always going in and out walking the dog. Just beautiful. Um, yeah. And as this is not sponsored and none of our show is sponsored, the brand is Kizix. Um, if in case anyone wants to know, I do recommend them. According to my dad, because when I got them for him, he was like, oh, this is just like the Skechers step in oh, or something. Apparently Skechers yeah. makes one. Yeah, And I didn't I know that, that or, or no. Yeah. At the time, the ones that were Skechers, they didn't look like the Kizik's look more like regular athletic shoes, like regular sneakers. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of the Skechers ones seemed like they were like orthopedic shoes or something um uh, my brother did call these my sketcher shape-ups and was clowning me the entire time i was home oh but my God, i do not I care when my mom got some shape-ups oh she <laughs> loved the honey you could she not tell her them. nothing no, not uh. a nana, nana, nana. she was oh she loved her her shape -ups, her shape-ups <laughs> Lord. Yeah, so these are not shape ups, but just know that if there are cool people in your life, they might clown you because they are not cool sneakers. But whatever, the kids are wearing like dad Let shoes. Tell you, so if anything, clown you for I truly anything. don't care. This if is you make true. money, they'll clown you. If you're poor, they'll clown you. If you're short, they'll clown you. If you're too tall, like poor, poor Noah. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone We're through it. Euphoria High School. I was just thinking today because I was like, oh, now we have video, whatever. I was like, we should put up that video of the kissing booth. Oh, yeah. um, and because I started rewatching New Girl and the oh, lead actress, uh, Joey King from Kissing Booth, is in New Girl in one episode. Is she? Yeah, she plays one of Jess's oh, students. One of the students. Yeah. I love New Girl. Um, it's so funny. But I love it. It's hard to watch to go to sleep because they make a lot of noise. Like I like oh. quiet things when I go to sleep, but it still needs to be on. But they're very noisy. I'm like, oh, new girl, relax. I don't watch things to go to sleep, but I could see how that would be too loud. Yeah, yeah we just started watching it um, when we we're eating dinner and stuff. And it's been a long time since I've seen the first seasons of New Girl. And I forgot how number one how funny it is and also how so many of the dumb little jokes i remember i used to i mean i still show. i have them on rotation like i watch friends for a while then i watch mm -hmm. new girl for a while and then gilmore girls oh i was gonna say happy endings you should do that oh i do that one too as well okay. um but okay ones that are netflix are easier because oh. you can, and then that's why i moved over to hbo max for friends and happy endings i actually have the dvd and they're mm. on like hulu and netflix happy endings is actually one of the greater shows that they should have probably brought back but incredible incredible yes. great times three Folks, seasons of pure joy if you have not watched happy endings or if you haven't watched it in a while recommend a rewatch definitely over watching how to lose a guy in 10 days oh absolutely Side note, Absolutely. I keep wanting to say how to get away with murder, and that is not... <laughs> no, not at all. How to get away with murder in 10 days. How to <laughs> stop watching TV in 10 days, because this will be the one. This... How to murder a guy in 10 days. We need to stop saying murder. Okay, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, whatever. People love murder. The murder podcasts are the most popular ones. Oh, this is going to no. get our numbers up. Murder, murder, murder. <laughs> murder no my phone's here now it's gonna pick up and tiktok's gonna only show me murder stuff 
Thanks for listening to Get Funny. We hope you laughed. But if you didn't. We did. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we killed it. Crushed it. <laughs>